A Pixel Watch, $2 billion. A clamshell foldable phone, $1,500. Adult podcasts on your app, almost all your ad revenue. A dick pic on a major Samsung app. All right, so let's see. This is the Android Police Podcast. It's Friday, November 1st. Welcome. I'm Cody Toombs, along with Corbin Davenport. Of course, the big story today is obviously Google's acquisition of Fitbit. The company confirmed earlier today that they're buying the fitness tech firm for $2.1 billion. Uh, a blog post by Rick Oslo has popped up, basically confirming that uh, they're going to be working with Fitbit's team of experts, uh, keeping everybody around, and they're going to be uh, bringing a lot of this stuff over to Wear. They haven't really specified exactly what's what all is going to be coming over to where. They're not really talking too much about products at this stage. But, you know, they're basically they're kind of implying very heavily that this is going to benefit where. And they haven't talked too much about how it's going to affect Fitbit, uh, both products and data users, pretty much everything else. However, they have confirmed that they're going to continue collecting data with, quote unquote, transparent practices. So uh, basically, they're promising not to be evil. Mm. Um, so anyway, uh, Fitbit CEO James Park has also popped up to uh, to basically say that Google is an ideal partner for what they were working on. Uh, he also confirmed that Fitbit has 28 million active users and they've sold over 100 million devices. The deal is set to close early next year, but, uh, you know, that could be anywhere from uh, beginning to it, the way Google's timelines work, possibly closer to middle. Um, so uh, what do you think this means for a Pixel watch? <sighs> that's that's sort of the million dollar question, because, you know, there were there were rumors last year that Google would make a Pixel Watch that just you know ran Wear OS, and the reports that have come out since then said they um, canceled it because it wasn't really unique in any way. Um, kind of the problem with Wear OS not uh, being a customizable platform for OEMs is that there's not much variation in software and features, um, so. They Google did confirm that they are going to make some kind of wearable device under their own brand, um, which would presumably be the Pixel Watch, um, or maybe they might call it something different. We're not really sure, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. It would it just be a Fitbit with a different sticker on it, or would it? have some kind of deeper integration maybe with Google Fit or some, I I don't know I it, it's hard for me to imagine what a theoretical pixel watch based on um Fitbit technology would be um and and Google kind of didn't make that clear either they just said that they would use Fitbit technology to improve Wear OS and vice versa so it's yeah, you know, maybe it will be a Wear OS watch, but it'll be it'll have some Fitbit DNA injected in. So far, most of the people have been talking about uh, basically borrowing Fitbit's algorithm for like step detection, things like that. And uh, for some reason, people keep talking about bringing over like battery life improvements and things like that, which I think ultimately are. It probably not really going to happen no, that's, because that's, we're, that's we're not, talking two very different platforms. Yeah, that's not going <laughs> to happen with 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 Android. <laughs> There's no like secret sauce for low battery. It's just that Wear OS has a million things going on in the background on top of powering a full color LCD screen and everything else. Yeah. So what I have a feeling is going to happen here is they're probably bringing over talent that will fill in the void that was kind of left behind in where it seemed like a lot of people really uh, like their best talent moved on to other projects. So I think this is kind of maybe a restarting point for where. So 
it, it imagine something along the lines of take the existing platform, hand it off to new people and try basically a third attempt to make something good out of this with people who are kind of coming at this fresh, uh, though already with the proven background of Fitbit. Yeah, and, and we know Wear OS is definitely not going anywhere, at least for a while, because Google did say in the blog post that they're committed to Wear OS for its partners. So Fossil can can take a sigh of relief. They're not having their, their OS, you know, thrown out from under them. Um but yeah, like I it's I don't know. There's there's not an the both the blog posts were very vague about the specific plans and Google being Google, it could go so many different ways. So I don't know. It, it's I, I can't. It's hard for me to imagine what what this could potentially look like. Um, but probably anything better than what exists now would <laughs> would be appreciated. Well, one way or another, at an at an investment of two point one billion, even though that by today's standards is not that insane, uh, you got to figure somebody somewhere is going to have to make sure some products come out under this name or maybe sorry not under the name but uh under this acquisition there's going to have to be some kind of a product so we oh. definitely have things to look forward to oh so here's a before right before we move on to another topic here's a here's a fun fact um do you know off the top of your head how much google paid for htc's pixel team and licenses and everything uh Oh, it I was, think I did, but it was 1.1 billion. So, <laughs> so that so uh, uh, Fitbit was was two HTCs. <laughs> well, basically, okay. To be fair, though, uh, Fitbit they're getting the entire company, the yeah. branding, uh, presumably user data. Whereas with HTC, they picked up they just got uh, the good just part. people, <laughs> some, possibly some patents. I'm not sure about yeah. that one. Uh, yeah, there's some licensing. But, but yeah, yeah that, that definitely a much smaller in terms of size acquisition uh, and, and value is still unclear. Yeah. So let's flip to another story and talk about Motorola's new Razer phone that got leaked all over the place yesterday, like a Google phone. Uh, so there were a bunch of pictures that came out from EV leaks, which is, um, is Evan Blass on Twitter and... Uh, Mo mobile Copen, I think that's what it is. Jules' little name tag in, in Google Docs is in the way, but I think that's what that says. Um, so it it's pretty much what everyone guessed. It's a foldable phone that, that instead of folding out horizontally, it's like a small phone that flips upward vertically like the Razer phone. Um, the interior screen supposedly is 6.2 inches when completely folded out with a notch. Um, there's a mini outside display, again, like old feature phones. That's 800 by 600 pixels. It's got a Snapdragon 710 chip, which is not flagship, but it's pretty close. Really, the only thing sacrificing there is um, graphics, but I'm not sure that this form factor lends itself to uh, easy gameplay. It supposedly got four to six gigs of RAM with 64 to 100 gigs of storage and a 2,700 milliamp battery. So that is a that's a pretty small battery, um, but that Snapdragon 710 is a little bit less power hungry than the flagship chips, so maybe it'll come out all right. Um, and obviously the cameras on the exterior. So, yeah, it's pretty much what everyone expected. Um, Foldable phone that flips up. Uh, I mean, the, the one thing that didn't get confirmed yet is the price, but there was a report from back in February that it would cost $1,500 from Verizon. Um, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, if that's the price that ends up actually going to store shelves, I do not predict ever seeing this phone sell in any in any reasonable number i'm i'm sure there will be a few people who just want it for the status symbol but overall uh, it, it's just too expensive especially for something that uh isn't really going to be that comfortable to use for a lot of purposes 
and I have trouble imagining it's even going to be, uh, I don't know. I have trouble imagining that it's going to actually be like attractive. Yeah. Like, like imagine trying to use, um, like the keyboard on the bottom half with the big, like bump in the way. Cause there's still the, the bump, like there was on the old razor phones, like the lip. So like, imagine like trying to like move your thumb around that <laughs> to, to type the lower keys on the keyboard. I'm sure that's going to be terrible. You know, it, uh, strangely, I think that bump might actually be a good thing because this it, when you flip it open, depending on where you're holding, it might be kind of top heavy and you might actually need that bump to like anchor your thumb. Possibly. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I don't really think that this form factor of a foldable phone has any advantages. It's just kind of to, to be neat. Which it is neat. Like uh, I'll still be excited to watch videos of this when it comes out, but I don't think it'll be very practical. And I'd, I'd much rather have something like the Galaxy Fold or, or Huawei's phone that actually gives you a, a larger screen than is possible from regular phones. Because when you're when you unfold this, it's just you just get the same screen that like every other phone has, except with so. a massive block at the bottom. Yes, and a smaller battery, <laughs> and probably no waterproofing. I and would imagine. mysteriously, there is a physical button there in the front of the blocker. At least that's what it looks like. So it's a little unclear why that's there, but uh, I guess we'll see. Yeah, I mean, it's it looks cool. Again, like I'll I'll definitely be excited to to. Ps- you know, see videos and and reviews of it, but I, I can't imagine this will be a recommended product for the most part. <laughs> no, probably... Jerry rig everything will certainly be having some fun with this too. <laughs> well, it's a foldable phone, so I, I think if you just like breathe on it hard, it'll, <laughs> it'll snap. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Uh, there's there's just so little future for foldables in this current setting. I'm looking forward to them in the future, but. At this stage, they're still going to be kind of bad products. First gen products are almost always just never really battle tested enough. Yeah, and and even at fifteen hundred dollars, that's still cheaper than the Galaxy Fold. Um, <laughs> which <laughs> this is true. <laughs> it's kind of kind of depressing a little bit, but though this is a smaller device screens yeah. uh, in terms of screen real estate this is a smaller device so uh understandably the fold would be a little pricier it, yeah. maybe not as pricey as it is but a little bit yeah and the the galaxy fold also had way better hardware inside like it had flagship chips it had a, i think it had like 512 or a, or a terabyte of storage something like that with a lot of ram and like 10 cameras so, yeah. Yeah, though that is pretty standard with Samsung phones, whereas here we're looking at, a, very unfortunately, a Lenovo product. So yeah, uh, you also have to wonder what's the software update situation going to be like on a phone that's probably not going to sell very many units. I think you'll get one update. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think pretty you much. might get... I think it'll, it'll probably ship with Pi and you'll get 10 next year. <laughs> Oof. Yeah. Uh, anyway, on the subject of oof, at and never seems satisfied with how it makes cell phone plans. Three new quote unquote unlimited plans will be offered starting Saturday and continues to limit what the word unlimited really means. So the three plans include unlimited starter, which is going to be unlimited talk, text and data in the US, Mexico and Canada. And by the way, all these plans are going to basically build on top of each other. So I won't repeat everything. Uh, The speeds for this one will be throttled based on congestion. So sometimes you may get full speed. Other times it's going to be pretty much just whatever AT&T decides to give you. Uh, And it's going to be $65 for one line and then 35 per person for four. The next one up is unlimited extra. Uh, This one's going to guarantee 50 gigabytes of high-speed data and 15 gigabytes of mobile hotspot per line. And this one raises the price by $10 for the first line and $5 for each uh, per person line after that. And then 
there's unlimited elite which i don't believe the launch date has actually been given for this one yet but it's going to be coming sometime later this one ups it to 100 gigs uh, sorry excuse me 100 gigabytes of guaranteed high speed data 30 gigabytes of mobile hotspot per line uh free hbo and that's actually going to be uh plus hbo max uh basically just for as long as you've got this subscription and the price goes up to 85 for one line and $50 per person for four. And uh, apparently they are running a promo right now that's going to give you a $700 credit for those who switch or add a new uh, line or plan with trade-in. So uh, this is, to me, just another one of AT&T's sort of it's not the worst plan in the world, but it's also not that good. Any any thoughts from you? No, I'm just I I had to hold back some some giggles while you were talking because like I can't get over these like 15 variants of unlimited. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's like I feel like am I on crazy pills here? Like what's going on? what's going on? Um, but yeah, I mean these aren't. These don't really seem like a good value whatsoever, um, especially for single lines. Like I think the the unlimited starter, uh, which is the one where you, like your speed could just be throttled for whatever reason if they if they feel like it. That's sixty five bucks for one line, and Cricket, which is AT and T's sub carrier, I believe their unlimited plan is the same price, but you also get hotspot data and uh, and other benefits. So, like, at least on that one, you actually get a better deal from AT&T's uh, MVMO. Um, and you still, you know, and both are subject to data throttling. So I don't think there's any any benefit going to AT&T's. So it's, and then you've got, you know, MVMOs in general are, are hyper competitive right now, especially Verizon trying to push its um, visible carrier so, yeah, these aren't really amazing. They're just whatever the new plans. There'll be new ones in eighteen months that I'll have to keep track of. Okay, evidently uh, there is a correction to the post. Uh, I I guess Elite is actually going to be coming out at the same time. There won't be a delay on that one. Okay, uh, because everyone's going to be super excited to get that one. I'm sure. Well, you got to get that HBO Max, you know, when it comes out in six months. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I got to um, watch Sesame Street, Cody. <laughs> hey, Game of Thrones reruns, always a thing. But uh, no, this, it, I, to this day, I'm still bothered by the idea that hotspot data is not just part of all data. Yeah, that drives uh, me crazy. Yeah, that's a little insane. It's the wrong thing to be doing. But uh, regardless, it's, I don't know, they're, it, this is the, again, kind of a typical carrier plan. It doesn't really feel all that different, except that they're kind of moving numbers around a little bit, tweaking what they're calling everything. And in the end, it's, it's all just a lot more of the same. So I don't know. It's, it's fine. If you're on AT and T uh, and you can do the math, maybe this will somehow work out better for you. But uh, I think for most people, if you're already on AT and T, you're probably not really looking to change. And if you're not on AT and T, I feel I feel like this isn't really going to drag you over. Yeah, this isn't. I don't think this is like one of those times where the new plans are are objectively worse than what was there before. So you have like this group of people like holding on to their grandfathered plans as as much as they can. It's just, you know, like I said, it's the new ones. There'll be new ones in eighteen months. So okay, good job, AT and T. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's just AT and T trying to make a buck. And speaking of making a buck, Corbin, you should help us make a buck. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> it, awkward transition, but it works. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, so yeah, Android Police, which you're listening to right now, is live on Twitch every week, multiple times a week, in fact. And it takes a lot of work to do this. And Jules is trying his best behind the scenes to make keep us from saying the wrong thing. 
So if you want to help us out, um, and if you like the show, we would very much like it if you subscribed to us on twitch.tv slash Android Police. And that's where you can subscribe. If you have an Amazon Prime, you can um, you get actually one subscription for free that you can give to any channel. And you can give it to us. So you're giving us money without actually paying anything extra. So both of us win in that situation. And when you subscribe, you get a special Rhyme emoji you can use in the chat, which is a lot of fun. And you also get extra entry methods in all the giveaways that we do. And we, we're ramping up the giveaways once again. So there's a lot of times for you to get your get your uh, subs worth out of that. Um, also, we have other tiers that start at five dollars a month if you don't have Amazon Prime, but you still want to help, and that would that's that's doubly appreciated because now you're actually giving us your money. <laughs> um, and uh, also, if you we have a couple other donate options too, you can go to AndroidPolice.com and hit the donate button for uh, other ways to help us out. And uh, we appreciate it if you've if you've donated or subscribed in the past. And uh, yeah, let's 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 keep on trucking on this show because we've got we've got more we got more funny things to talk about. Starting with, uh, Google suspended the advertising account for a popular podcast app called Podcast Addict. Um, and you may be wondering, you know, what could be controversial about a podcast app? Well, I didn't tell you this, but there are apparently uh, not child-friendly podcasts on the internet that may have content that's semi-adult or adult. Um, you know, who knew? Who knew about this? I certainly didn't. But Golly, sounds uh, like the entire internet to me. I know. It's craziness. Uh, but Google suspended the uh, advertising account for the app um, just kind of out of nowhere. And the, of course, the developer was surprised by this and contacted Google. And it turned out it was because you could find uh, adult podcasts in Podcast Addict. That was the reason, because you could access, you could theoretically access adult content. Um, I don't know if like the app was specifically highlighting this. I imagine it wasn't. But either way, this is sort of like, the latest latest example of Google's really strange Play Store rule enforcement, um, because there's there's been a lot of apps um, that can theoretically be used for adult purposes or maybe illegal purposes. Like if you go, you know, if you use like a Reddit app to buy weed and weed isn't legal where you live, you know, it's the same. Well, with a web browser, you know, how many legal things? or adult things can you access with Chrome, but Chrome is still on the Play Store and hasn't ever been taken down. Um, you know, an, another another example that just happened a little while ago was uh, Flet, Fletsky, is that what it's called? Flexi. Flexi, uh, which is a, a popular third-party keyboard. It was removed because there was a middle finger emoji in the emoji rack, like every other keyboard, including Google's. <laughs> so it's... <laughs> It, it's it, it's sort of the latest example of this really bizarre thing where developers are sort of at the whim of these rules that Google itself, you know, it, is Google itself does is, you know, Chrome's still in the Play Store. Um, I'm sure Google Podcast is not at risk of being taken down for this reason. Um, now, the good news is that Google reinstated the developer's um, advertising account um, an hour after we published um, our story about it. So uh, I think we can take full credit for that. <laughs> and I'm, I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, that was that was ridiculous. And again, we shouldn't have had to, like, that shouldn't happen. Um, this is just sort of another example of, of Google randomly enforcing rules. Um, you know, if I was to put my tinfoil hat on, I could say maybe Google wants to weed out some of its competition. But I don't think that's the case. I think it's just Google is all over the place with this and doesn't have, um, it doesn't have standardized rules for dealing with this kind of thing. Yeah, so. unfortunately, over over the years, you know, we're we're now pretty far into the Play Store as a as a business model for many many people. Over the years, we hear about this, I would say on average, about every 
three or four months, there's some not I don't want to call it high profile app, but there's always some app that is actually very credible, very legitimate or developer who suddenly everything just gets blocked, taken down, whatever the case is. And uh, every once in a while, it gets resolved quickly. Sometimes it is very legitimately a mistake on the part of the developer or uh, some technical error. But most of the time, it's some bizarre policy or rule enforcement that doesn't really make sense. Sometimes it's completely misattributed, uh, as is the case with Podcast Addict. And there's just so many strange instances and occurrences like this. Uh, and as people have said many, many times, so many times, uh, Google needs to have human beings to actually deal with this stuff. And it was earlier this year, I believe, they they committed to having humans checking over every decision that's made to uh, to basically deal with these issues before they become issues. And so far, we haven't really seen that. Notably, I will, I will grant, I think the ad mob situation is separate from the Play Store. So that's a little bit different from the normal... Uh, normal rule issues yeah you, I usually they're just like taken down from the play store or something like that. exactly i think ad mob pulling ads was probably more just either uh i believe ad mob to some extent can examine apps and it's possible maybe it detected something on the screen was uh inappropriate at which point it flat it auto flagged the app as possibly hosting adult content, at which point I think that's possibly where this went wrong. Uh, whereas like the flexi situation, I almost wonder if this was just an instance of some random person reporting the app and getting a few other people to report the app. And next thing you know, the play store's like, yeah, let's just, let's just block it out because, yeah. you know, these kinds of things are still too easy. And it seems like, individual just a handful of individual people could really solve this problem if they just hired them and had them you know hang out and review stuff more often yeah but as we all know google is allergic to humans reviewing things so it's all up to the algorithms to decide our fate well i mean they're always happy to have humans review them as long as they're the unpaid uh users as opposed to uh, yes. giving them an office and an official title. Yes. Anyway, so uh, speaking of things that probably should have been reviewed and thought about long and hard, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> let's talk about an instance of the, uh, what was it? The Samsung members app. <clears throat> I mean, members app. <clears throat> I it, I said uh, members. I swear, members app. Uh, oh, uh, before we continue, uh, if you have children in the car, you might want to switch to a, <laughs> a different different podcast for a little while. <laughs> uh, just throwing that out there. Uh, it's about to get a little dicey. Oh yeah, no, we'll we'll try to keep it clean. Uh, and besides, this this segment won't go on for schlong. I mean, long. But. <laughs> Oh my God. Uh oh, we'll, we'll see how many more of these I've got. Uh, anyway, uh, for those who checked out the Samsung members app, uh, on the community page, uh, there was for, I believe about four hours, a picture of, uh, exposed male, male genitalia, uh, <laughs> showing as the featured post. It, uh, the post was titled, I hate this effing pigs, and apparently included the words Charlotte shooting with my friends today, and I know there's some people are really, really stupid, even more stupid than me, and that's a long shot. This is a direct quote, by the way. Uh, why, this, why this gained attention, it's a little unclear, but apparently uh, somebody... In posting this picture with the exposed male genitalia, it became semi-viral. And more and more people kept checking out this post, and it ended up, uh, due to this, becoming the featured post on the community. Uh, Samsung's people did not notice this right away. Apparently, 
it took being reported several times before uh before the post went down um uh, which you know their enforcement is uh you know a little soft one might say but yeah anyway th this is this is one of those times you sh you just got to see real human beings need to be somewhere it just pays to have somebody watching everything well this is like the classic example of um like whenever you see a website that, that embeds like a twitter hashtag or something like that's just you shouldn't ever do that because <laughs> <laughs> it only takes one person posting that hashtag to to 4chan or the wrong subreddit and it's going to be very quickly ruined and you're going to look like a, a like an idiot uh so yeah this not good now granted it doesn't seem like a whole lot of people saw this because i did um i did a twitter search right after it was taken down and i only found like a handful of people complaining about it but also i don't know what the ratio would be of people seeing it and complaining about it it might just be people don't care <laughs> it did have a uh, 23 replies in the app um according to this one screenshot we have before it got taken down so yeah well, it, perhaps perhaps some people found it amusing <laughs> i mean i know i mean i know i do because <laughs> this is such a dumb thing and and our post about it actually did very well <laughs> in terms of views <laughs> uh yeah it did well to be fair uh who doesn't like a post that just you know dances around the subject a little bit and besides yeah. we're, we're just dicking around a little you know can we stop <laughs> honestly i'm uh, holding back so many you have no idea I, the the comment the comment section on on this article is great um by the way so if, if you have a spare minute you should everyone should go read the comments because there's a lot of very excellent puns yes it, in fact i honestly must call out truly my favorite among them uh crazy frog left the comment s peen i loved it <laughs> that that was too awesome yeah yeah that was good <laughs> anyway uh do you have anything else to add on that one no, I think we can leave it there. <laughs> All right. We'll just leave it hanging. <laughs> uh, I told you it had to be done. Anyway, I think that'll be it for us today. Uh, feel free to connect with us anytime. We're live four times a week on Twitch TV or sorry, twitch.tv slash Android Police. All the stories we've talked about today can be found at androidpolice.com slash podcast. If you'd like to send your thoughts and suggestions to podcast at androidpolice.com. I said that completely wrong, so I'm going to make Jules edit this line in. So it actually sounds like, and you can send your thoughts and suggestions to podcast at androidpolice.com. On Twitter, I am Cody underscore Tombs. And Corbin is Corbin Davenport. Our producer, Jules Wang, is at Point Jules. And our theme music is by Home. We're back again to wrap up your week on Friday. But until then, Jules today's, is going to be today's, editing today's that. Friday. <laughs> Jules, Friday. today's Friday, Cody. Yeah, yeah. I, I got halfway through that sentence and <laughs> saw it. Anyway, so while Jules is scrambling to write something different and will end up editing out this part, we'll just say thank you for joining us. We'll be back on Monday with more news. And have a great weekend, everybody. Be safe. Goodbye.